Drag Race. Marco Ooh. Andretti, Hornish, who's gonna win at the stripe? It's Hornish! Oh, Hornish wins. wins by six one hundredths of a second. Marco Andretti burst onto the scene in 2006 and nearly won the Indianapolis 500 as a 19-year-old rookie. It's a bummer. I, I got to take advantage of every shot out here. I really do, because second's nothing. Now in his 11th season, the third-generation driver has struggled to find results with just two career IndyCar wins. I sort of agree with my critics a lot of the times. Like, I really do, and, and uh, because I should be winning, and I feel I should be winning, and, and, uh, and quite honestly, it's pathetic that we're not winning. But that just makes me work harder, because I'm not satisfied by any means. This weekend, after nearly a decade away, IndyCar returns to Road America, a track rich with history and filled with Andretti wins. Mario Andretti takes the checkered flag as the winner of the Provimi Veal 200. Michael Andretti takes the checkered flag of victory. His dad and grandpa both won here three times. Now it's Marco's turn to step out of their shadow and win at Road America. There's nothing like an Indy car around this place. I mean, uh, my first couple of laps here, I, I literally had a smile on my face. I, um, you know, I really, really enjoy this place. It, it instantly became my, uh, my favorite racetrack in North America. legendary road course built into the East Central Wisconsin countryside in the early 1950s began hosting kart races in 1982, but has been without IndyCar racing for nearly a decade until this weekend. I love this track. You know, I absolutely love the fast flowing corners and it's such a commitment place. You would think with all the straightaways that it's not, it's not very physical, but um, it's one of those you come in breathing pretty heavy because the level of commitment in every corner almost, um, you know, is, is really elevated. The weekend opens with the track walk, a formality at most events, but extremely important at Road America because less than half the field has raced an IndyCar here, including Marco Andretti. It's crazy how narrow it is. Yeah, no. Like for as fast for as some of these corners are. how fast it is, yeah. Marco toured the four mile course with engineers Nathan O'Rourke and Ron Barhorst. Did you get out on the White part or not? Where are the exits? No, on the apex, there's no way. No, no, no. I mean, I just get basically right to the curb. The curbs here aren't very friendly, especially the exits. I mean, that's another that's another one that just, they're just so abrasive that it just, you get that snap. The whole, actually the whole car, you lose grip. They're pretty bumpy. Yeah. A nine-year-old Marco was here 20 years ago yeah. to see his dad's last win at Road America. Meanwhile, Tracy, no, Ellen's that's a junior, a that's junior. the race leader has lost oh, the engine. No. Can you believe this? Oh, no. Within sight of the check, just flag. coming up the hill. Oh, it's Michael Andretti. There is the Penske Pits, Roger Penske. Cannot believe what he is seeing, and perhaps neither can Michael Andretti, who takes the checkered flag of victory. I remember Dad's win here, which was, uh, that was special. It was, it was as close as, as I've uh, witnessed a win. I mean, you know, I was right next to the podium. I, I remember riding to the press conference with him and, and everything. So, um, you know, it was, it was very cool. It felt, uh, I felt very close to, to a win there. It was cool. Marco's dad won here three times in the 1990s, while his grandpa matched that win total in the 80s. Mario Andretti raises both hands and takes the checkered flag. For Marco to win this weekend, he'll need to turn his season around. He has just one top 10 finish this year and is 17th in points. I'm really up against it driving wise lately and, and in, in my, at this point in my career, I'm really feeling the pressure, not having a win in, in too, many, too long. Um, you know, so I'm really up against it. So there, it's a tough balance to, to, to try to do my thing and, and not let it affect my driving, you know, because I think it's, it's very easy to, to sort of bring that pressure inside the car with me and, and 
let the whole thing spiral in a negative way. So, so really, I mean, uh, I'm looking at this weekend as a, as a turning point in the season for sure, you know, and, and hopefully my career. You got plenty of fuel to make it, and you got plenty of fuel. You're good. He's That's not put a wheel wrong all day. I'm sure he won't for the next few turns, but can you imagine the emotions that's going on inside his helmet right now? Remember at Indianapolis, it was a last lap pass on the front straightaway where Sam Hornish snatched victory from Marco Andretti. It won't happen this time. The 19-year-old is going to win. Evan okay, Finley. great job, Nick. It's been 11 years since Marco Andretti won his first IndyCar race. At the time, becoming the youngest winner in open wheel history. Royal Michael and the new man, Marco Andretti. It took five years for him to win again. Marco has 39 top five finishes and 175 career starts, but just two wins. I sort of agree with my critics a lot of the times, like I really do, and, and uh, because I should be winning and I feel I should be winning and, and, uh, and quite honestly, it's pathetic that we're not winning but that just makes me work harder because I'm not satisfied by any means. Yeah, I'm in it 11 years. Yes, I, I should have done a lot better in those, those 11 years, but uh, in an ideal situation, um, I have 11 years left. And so I need to look at that second half of my career and, and look at the amazing things that I think we can pull off. I guess, he wants to do two, I want to do three. What? Laps. Where? On the first round. My dad and I were most mostly all business relationship anyway. It's always been that way. I mean, we, we, we call each other not to say what's up. We call each other when we need to call each other. And that's just always how it's been, and, and I'm fine with that. Michael Andretti also has a famous father in racing. And that topic came up during the weekend. He grew up in the shadow of one of the great drivers, if not the greatest of all time. And I used to say to him, I used to say to people, I don't He's having that much fun, and he said once after he retired, we did a big interview, he said, you don't understand the pressure I felt to try, that I had to, I mean, it was almost more pressure than fun. Yeah, I think my drive was not to fail. It wasn't about the win, it was just don't fail. And, uh, and I think that had a lot to do with, you know, growing up son of because of all the expectations. And, uh, you know, it, it made it as not, not as much fun when you want to race as maybe the other way, but, uh, but it really worked for me in way of drive. You know, it, 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 it would ever, it, I would never give up because of that. Fast forward 25 years, and now it's Marco trying to succeed with a famous last name. Lately, it's definitely tougher to smile because I, I really, it's, it's killing me not having the results that, that uh, I want so badly. And um, Having said that, you know, I'm, I'm obviously very fortunate to be, uh, to be in that situation, um, you know, so um, it's sort of a double-edged sword. I mean, I, you know, I'm here to win. I'm not just here to, to just be here. So uh, we need to, to make my presence more known than it, ha than it has been lately. Sometimes I feel for my fiance because I have a hard time smiling away from the track when things don't go right, um, you know, and, and, uh, and I happen to often carry that into my everyday life and I need to, I need to step back and realize I need to be enjoying life more, and, but it's hard to do when you don't have results, because for me, uh, you know, my life re revolves around that. Thank you. Thank you. Another resource for Marco is his grandfather. Mario Andretti is second in all-time wins and still travels to most of the races driving the IndyCar two-seater. He lives and breathes the sport. I mean, you know, I, I can't find really anybody that, that matches his uh, his desire for this this sport and, and his passion, um, but um, it's it's so cool to see. I mean, the guy we have to rip him out of the two seater at the end of a day, and he's 76 years old, and, and that's so admirable to see. And it's great to always bounce things off of him. And we're always just talking about small things, and and uh, you know, a lot of things that he has to say is, is extremely relevant today. Then I, I couldn't really stiff the bar all the way with something hanging onto the turbo. Do you have a rear bar in that? Oh yeah. And, and then it's the same thing, then, but it was what it was doing, it was snapping back. Yeah, so in finally, the compression. So finally then I got him to, to do it. I Lock made it. a world of difference, you know, later on. But I remember here when I was, you know, just 
rather regularly. Always, always for some reason, use a stiff bar here, and always it gets you turned because the, the corners like here are just uh, in and out. You know, you gotta have carry no good speed in, but then go. Yeah, no understeer. No understeer. Racing has been the family business for over 50 years, from Mario to Michael to Marco. You know, obviously there's big expectations on the outside, but I have big expectations for myself, and, and I'm extremely disappointed with the way things have gone. And I think one thing that's key about keeping your confidence going forward is you can't, you have to stop yourself from looking back and saying, we could have won this, could have won that, could have won that, because that just really, it puts you in the wrong sort of mindset. And uh, I just think it, you know, it could hinder your approach. So we just need to look forward and just, you know, know I'm with a great team and, and have a great shot every time we come to the track. Fans have been asking the question, when will IndyCars return to Road America? Well, that question need not be asked anymore. When the season's not been going the way you hoped it would go, yet we still have yeah, half of it. Yeah, exactly. But we still have half of it to go. What's your mindset at this point? Honestly, too? Brian Hurd has said it the best. Like, I need to look at, from this point on, as a championship in itself. Basically, approach, approach the second half of the season try to win that championship, you know, and that's the only thing we could do, because if we look at, if we keep looking back, it's not going to be great for our confidence, so we just need to go forward. Since joining IndyCar over a decade ago, Marco Andretti has seen the competition level grow tremendously. Now, every fraction of a second counts. Just the competitiveness from top to bottom, drivers, teams, it's unbelievable. It's the most competitive series in the world. I mean, I'll stand by that. Marco was 12th quick in practice and was cautiously optimistic going into qualifying. And it's tough to, to not reinvent the wheel right now. I mean, we're sitting P12, but I'm, I'm a tenth and a half out of third, you know, so, um, and we're actually on a lap to be third. So I don't think we need a lot. I just think we need to rub on. It's gonna be an exciting qualifying session. You make one mistake here, and it costs you a lot of straight line speed and lap time. So you gotta keep it clean and tidy. Okay, hey, timeline and pit, timeline and pit. We don't really know what it's gonna to take to make it. Three, two, one. Time is up. Who's going to make it? And who will not? Marco in the top six now. We think we need about two or three more tenths. He was set to transfer to the next round, but had a problem on his final lap that pushed him off course. Uh, uh, what did he do? Damn it, Marco. Uh. The curb sucked me off. What? The curb sucked him off the track. Yeah. That's, you're That's a bummer. That's good. Now you're going to be way down. You're going to end up about 10th. The car's got to stop jerking to the right. Can I do one more lap? No. Nope. nope. That's it. Now nope, we're done. You were doing OK. We were looking good there. P11. Those not moving on, Mikel Ocean, Takuma Sato, Spencer Piggott, Gabby Chavez, and Marco Andretti, who was last in this session. Car just turned sharp right. On the right. It turned me onto the curb. Breaking the straight line, it turned me. Hit the brakes, just turned me right, hit the curb, went straight. Why do they erase the time so quick? You don't want to see it. <laughs> no, what do we need to make it? Like, uh, you, were, you were on pace with Ryan. You were a tenth slower than Ryan up until that point, and he did a 2-9. He was like third quick. You were looking good. You were looking fine. Marco Andretti was not able to advance. It's always a guessing game when you go in and the, the alternates, and it's always so tight. What did you learn in that session? What are you lacking in? Uh, the car just went right on the brakes, just turned right. We were on a lap that would have transferred, but it just put me on the curb, and, and I, lost, I lost enough time to put us where we are. Um, it's a bummer. It, you know, I'd be more okay with it if, if, we, had, if we were just a last place car, but if we had a we had the car just totally just turn right on me on the brakes, and so it's just frustrating, man. 
Marco's long season continues. The mistake in qualifying means he'll start tomorrow's race from the back row. Good to see you guys. Hi. How you doing? Race day mornings are filled with sponsor commitments. And today, Marco Andretti is spending time with the folks from Mutual of Omaha. You're not starting quite as far up as you like to start. Not even close, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, thanks. Uh, how, how does that impact your strategy for the day? Um, well, we're, uh, we're starting on used reds, and we're kind of leaving the option open to do a three or a four stopper so um, you know I think that's going to be pretty unique so we can watch the pace of the used reds and if they are really falling off we can come in and put uh, put newer ones on and then switch our strategy to a four stopper um, if we're fast and we have a good good start which obviously we hope that's the case then we'll try to make those reds last to do a three stopper so uh, I think we have options that's that's one of the good things starting back there but uh, it's never ideal, but I think this place, you know, should be able to pass. In February, Marco got engaged to longtime girlfriend Marta Krupa, who is getting used to the racing lifestyle. She likes it. I mean, she, she's not she's not high on on the pressure, and, and uh, you know, she's not big on the what it takes commitment wise, and and uh, you know what it takes uh, off the track. You know, because I think it's not just you show up at the track and you're working four days out of a week. It's something that it's it's a life. A lifestyle you know and uh, um, she's extremely supportive of it it's just that uh, like I said I mean I, I need to I need to learn to smile and relax more away from the track and I think that'll come with uh, with victory as the teams and drivers get ready for the race so does Mario Andretti who will lead the field in the Indy car two seat <laughs> thanks for everything hey. <laughs> thank you we got a crowd here yeah <laughs> it's great I never doubted it. <laughs> Drivers, please start your engines. Welcome everyone to the Kohler Grand Prix. I tell you, this day has been a long time coming, and we are so proud to have IndyCar back in America's National Park of Speed. The last two champions in the Verizon IndyCar Series start on the front row with the series returning to Road America. We couldn't ask for it to be any better, any bigger. We've got a grandstand start. Will we get a grandstand finish? They pack up nice and tight. Powers looking for where Dixon is. They want to be nicely in formation coming out of turn 14 before they crest the hill. IndyCars are back at Road America and it's time to bring the action. Green, green, green. Look at them weaving and diving and ducking. Pagano is up to third. Graham Rahal, great start. Canaan tried to push it with power. The field cleanly through turn number one, now racing down turn number two. While the leaders battled up front, Marco was on the move, gaining four spots on the first lap. That was a pretty good start. Yeah, it was. Now we gotta watch, see, what, see how he's doing, right? On lap seven, Scott Dixon was running second when he had engine problems. Oh, Dixon's, what's going on with Dixon? Dixon's got a puncture. Dixon's got a problem. He's got a puncture, I think. Look at the yellow car, ailing. This is disastrous. He's got to go the whole way around the track. I've got an engine going. And no brakes now. I think we're on fire. Engine fire. Oh, disaster for Scott Dixon. Meanwhile, Michael Andretti and crew decide to try and make something happen from the back of the field. If you just want to still try to keep it the free stop or pit early, you do 11. I mean, we're ninth. Right? Yeah, we're not going to do anything from here, right? Who's pit? The All right, let's pit. Okay, we're going to pit, 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 pit. Marco Andretti, one of the first to pit on what we'd call the alternate strategy. He started at the back. He's going to try to three stop it here, and make it to the end. There you go. We're going to need some good laps here. Look at this James Hinchcliffe and his old teammate Marco Andretti. Now they're not fighting for the glamour positions. This is down in 19th and 20th. Just past the halfway point, Marco had moved through the field and was battling Michaela Lotion for 15th. He had to run, but the last was blocked. Are you kidding me? Sorry. He was blocking all the way down the straightaway. He went right and left. They are watching. Just have a car. What are you watching? Tell him, what are you watching? He did it. Are you going to give him a warning? I mean, he, he 
How many warnings does he get? He was watching Mark though, right? He was watching where he was going. I have no idea what their definition of blocking is. I know it's pretty big, right? Once you move, you gotta stay there. He didn't. He did two moves down the straightaway. Because Marco couldn't commit to either way because he, he moved. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Just go run him down. Go run him down. We already complained about him. With 10 laps left, Marco was up to 14th when there was a problem on the track. We have a battle down into turn number one. Connor Daly locks him up. He goes around into the gravel, slams into the tire barrier. Problems for that 18 machine after a great run throughout this entire afternoon. Marco ran strong in the final laps as Will Power held off Tony Kanaan to win in IndyCar's return to Road America. Checkered flag, checkered flag. T12, T12, good job. That's about as good as we can do today. Sorry, guys. Marco improved nine spots on the day to finish 12th, but was still not happy with his result. I'm gonna make myself better, I promise. Dude, don't say that. No, I'm not happy. I do not. Of course you're not. I'm not. Like, listen, that's not anything we need to get. Like, that's, that's a given. I'm gonna get better, man. I gotta get better, man. Nothing else to say. Okay. Gotta qualify better. Gotta stop making mistakes. Anyway, not happy with myself at all. It's been really, really bad. God, man, this qualifying, it's just making my Sundays miserable for me. The mistake in qualifying leads to another disappointing finish for Marco Andretti, who remains determined to get out of the shadows and make a name for himself. That mistake in qualifying is so detrimental, and it just makes our Sundays long, way longer than they have to be. Um, yeah, I feel like I let the guys down. I feel like I've been letting the guys down. So I really need to hit the drawing board, figure out what the heck's going on, you know, especially in qualifying. The, the bummer is I feel like we had pace in, in qualifying. I just didn't get it out of the car, which makes it tough to sleep. But, um, you know, we, we fought, but it's just not good enough. When 12th is the best we could have done, you know. It's, uh, it's disappointing. It's frustrating. You know, we, we don't want to come here to run 12th.